turn straight to one of the other big issues underlying all of this, planning and housing, and look a little bit further under the bonnet, because Sam Bowman, formerly the research director of the Adam Smith Institute, now editor of Works in Progress, has written a really interesting assessment of Labour's plans today, broadly in favour, I think, of what they say on house building, but he still thinks there is a lot to get right. Uh, he's with me now. Sam, the main thing that you talk about in your interesting piece is it's not just house building or homes, it's where they're going to be. Absolutely. The problem that we've had in the UK for many, many years isn't just that we haven't built enough homes, it's that the homes we have built have been in the wrong places. So to put that in perspective, London is about 16% of the UK, of the English population. It's only built about 11% of houses in England since um, 2016. There's a huge undersupply of housing in the place where the demand for housing is highest. And we can look at demand for housing by looking at things like the price of new houses compared to how much they cost to build, council housing waiting lists, people's desire to move there because of jobs. And again and again and again, people are shouting out for housing in London rather than other parts of the country. So we know they're going to change the housing rules, quite uh, the, the planning rules quite a lot. But the suggestion would be don't get involved in hundreds of local arguments in sort of Dorset and Devon and Hampshire about new housing developments. Think really hard about London. And I guess my obvious question to you, as somebody who lives in London, is how can you get a lot more density, a lot more houses built in London? You can do it pretty easily, actually. You don't need primary legislation. You just need the housing secretary to issue what's called a special development order. And what this would say is that in any land within the London, the greater London area that is currently used for residential housing, you can build up to eight stories. Now, I think you need some other rules as well. Obviously, existing rules around safety and things like that would all apply. I think you should also have some kind of mechanism to allow local people to vote on the design of the housing, because I think people really, really care about what housing looks like. Mm. When you look across London and you look at the most beautiful and the most popular parts of London, they're the densest. There are places like Chelsea, like Marylebone, there are places like Bloomsbury. And I think that much more of London being allowed to build up to that eight story level that those places have very commonly would allow us to get in tons more housing. You can look at another city, Paris, which is much denser. If you walk around Paris, all of the central areas right out into the kind of outskirts that people might stay in now are usually built up to six, seven or eight storeys. So up, 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 end the two-storey house. Huge amounts of density. You wouldn't really end the two-storey house because I'm joking, really. lots of places... Well, it's very it's important <laughs> because I think people... Lots of people sitting thinking, well, help. You, well, exactly. I think it's really important to be clear that most of the housing that, that is wanted is housing that would be very central. Talking about places like Lambeth, where I live, Islington, Peckham, places that could be much denser and I think would be a lot better off for it because they'd have much more people there, there'd be many more jobs, much more local services and much more demand for public transport so you could add in new transit lines and things like that. But that would also reduce the pressure on the rest of the country and reduce the pressure on much more far, far out places like Reading, Guildford, where people have to live. I mean, lots of good reasons to live in those places, but often people are pushed out there because the housing in London... And centrally spending hours yes, commuting in and, and out. sending hours commuting in and out. So that's one of the big issues. Another big issue is 1.5 million new homes. Sounds a great number, but do you think it's not nearly enough? No, it depends on who you ask, but Kate Barker, who wrote the very, very influential Barker Review in 2004, argued that we needed about 300,000 more homes every year, and that was 20 years ago. We built about half that much, so just by her numbers, we're 3 million houses behind where we should be. If you look at the Centre for Cities, they've looked at housing in Western Europe, and they estimate that if we were to reach parity with countries like Germany, France, Denmark, Sweden, we'd need to build 4.3 million more homes. And my, argument, wow. <laughs> and my argument is that we need to not just think in terms of national numbers of houses, but think about where the houses are. And if we do that, we're probably going to need many, many more houses than that. But I think a really simple place to start would be to say, London is a very special city, we can densify it massively, and we can allow many people to move to London. And I think we could possibly double the size of London in a decade or so. And there's one final thing that you talk about that's really interesting. You say that our houses, there's not, it's not just that there aren't enough of them, but also they're too small. They're too small. Both private houses and public houses built since the Second World War effectively suffered from shrinkflation. So house prices stayed relatively steady, but the size got smaller and smaller and smaller. And the problem is now that we have the smallest houses in Western Europe. They're often very, not very well built. 
often occasionally they're they're unsafe they're not very pretty i think we need to really overhaul the entire uk housing stock so that everybody whether they're a social tenant they're a private renter they're an owner occupier can expect a larger home that's better insulated that's more beautiful and hopefully that's closer to the sorts of jobs that they'd like and then we can do that we just need to allow that kind of housing to be built Sam, I entirely hope that Keir Starmer is sitting somewhere with a cup of tea and a small cake, listening intently to what you've been saying. Thank you very much.